empty hearts and neon lights The playing with my mind Gotta get out of here tonight Oh, I wanna run off I am blind And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Manny Ray's Noma Truck Series live from the high banks of Talladega Super Speedway. Getting ready for the Rhino Linings 200 
here at the fastest track in all of NASCAR. Thank you so much, all of you, for tuning in here tonight. You're watching Austin Green on Ghost Racing Network. Drivers down track side, they've got gridded up, getting ready to go. So with that, let's get right into your starting order here tonight. The man on the pole, it's going to be the 31 of Jay Stinson. For Venom Racing, good qualifying effort for him. Puts down a 55.6. Rolling off on his outside, it's going to be Kenneth Redinger. For Grandstand Racing, just behind him will be Ronnie Morrison in the 69 truck. To the outside, row number two going to be Mark Beverly, Clay Cantrell in fifth. Justin Parham back in sixth. Wesley Phillips seventh. Haas Beverly in eighth. Matthew Fritz in ninth. And rounding out your top ten here tonight is going to be Kevin Winker in the 42. Michael Lawrence will roll off 11th. Justin Bentley to his outside in 12th. Row number 7 going to be Derek Catt and Joey Hickox. Keith Prince in 15th. Ryan Newman in 16th. Sam Boutwell 17th. Bill Hales in 18th. Clinton Woodby 19th. And Zach Stevens rounding out your top 20. Dylan Paws will roll off 21st. It's going to be Riley Gomes in 22nd. Moving on back to 23rd. We'll roll off with Chase Greer. 24th, Tyler Clemens. Aiden Lund back in 25th. Rounding out row number 13 is going to be Brody Benty. He will start 26th in that 63 truck. Ryan Gomes rounding out the field tonight. He will roll off 27th. Moving into your race info here tonight. Again, it is the Rhino Linings 200 here at Talladega Super Speedway in the Noma Truck Series. Of course, as always, distance total here tonight going to be 94 laps, just about 200 miles exact. Everybody has 75% fuel, six sets of tires, one fast repair if you need it, fixed setups as always. And then we do have a stage break tonight, two of them. Stage one will be at the end of lap 20. Stage two finishes at the end of lap 48. And then three green-white checkers as well if we were to need them. And I have a feeling there's a chance we might need at least one of them because Talladega, it's different than just about any other track we go to on the season. None other like it except for, of course, Daytona, which was the season opener. But here we go, breakdown of it. I mean, 2.65 miles in length, over 30 degrees of banking in the corners. Going to be a lot of bump drafting, a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. Two, three wide action expected all night. Track temp, 125 degrees starting. Actually, it may even read a little hotter than that. Officially 129. So that's scorching track, track temp. It's going to be tough for these guys. Truck's probably the easiest series of them all to drive here, but... When that track temp starts to get hot, that changes a little bit. We'll be keeping an eye on tire wear as we go through this race. 72 degrees outside, 10% humidity, clear skies, and winds at 2 miles an hour. Not going to be a factor. All right, well, here we go. Pace car making the left turn for the first time here tonight as the field will roll up in the hands of Jay Stinson and Kenneth Redinger. Last super speedway we were at, of course, with it being Daytona in the season opener, we saw Bill Hales get the win. A lot of work for that 53 to do, but I'm sure he'll be up here at some point. Here we go green into flag, the Geico green restart flag. zone. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at Talladega. Lap one is complete here at Talladega, and the first lap does indeed go to the 24 machine of Kenneth Redinger. Qualified second, but now leads the way, still rolling the top. It's Stinson leading the bottom. 69 of Ronnie Morrison in tow, as is the 97 of Mark Beverly. Those two right now and the most important position of anybody in this field is they are the lead pushers, and really they kind of dictate how these two lines move, of course, with some influence from the third truck in each lane as well. Parham was a little bit closer. That allowed Redinger to get a little bit bigger of a run down the back that time. Stinson able to fight back through the corner, taking the short way around the racetrack. 
Now, touching back real quick on what we brought up earlier in regards to what the track temp is for this race. Remember, the hotter the track temp is, the more moves you're going to be able to make on the outside, especially as the run goes on, and the more you're going to have to watch and manage those temps. Normally, that's not an issue when we head to any of the other tracks we go to, but when the front grill of your truck is constantly sucking up to the back bumper of another truck, can't get any inflow to the engine, and it will start to get hot eventually. you got to bail out, get some air in the engine, and once you cool down, get right back to it. Here we go, though, already three wide, and shouldn't come as any surprise as who it is. Kevin Winker in the 42 wants to go to the front. And it looks like he is going to get some help here as well. That's Keith Prince trying to see if they can get something going here up top. By the way, Kevin Winker is the only man that we've got on driver cams here tonight. You saw him pop up as he was loading into our driver cams there earlier. And as we set up a couple things with it here, it actually, it's a pretty cool setup he's got. That's what I was just noticing. I know he was talking about it, but I mean, there you go. See it there. I don't know if you can tell, but the floor on his rig is actually see-through. So he's got all the LED lights coming from. Pretty cool monitor set up as well on top of that. And as we mentioned, them staying up top for the moment and trying to get all the way up to the front, they're still going to need a little bit of help. And it looks like they're starting to get just that now. As what was just two trucks is now three, almost four. That's the 16 of Justin Bentley, who's now made his way up to that third lane. Keith Prince really, really struggling to suck up to the back bumper here, though, of Kevin Winker. Three trucks, all you technically need to make progress anymore, though. Certainly helps the cause. Derek Cat, he'll now jump up top. Leaves out Michael Lawrence. On the inside, Brody Benty. He's got a new scheme here tonight as well. Looks like it's a Raising Cane scheme for the 63 truck. And after about your top 20 or so, give or take, Bill Hale's on back. Looks like everything's single filed out. These are the guys that don't want to have to worry about using that fast repair early. They're more than content to play it safe. And I wonder if fuel's a little bit close here. We know on a full tank of gas, you could make it probably, say, about 30, maybe 32 laps if you saved a little bit. 50% of that gets you about 15 to 16 laps, and then somewhere right in the middle of that is probably right around 24 laps. So actually, everybody should be good to go here on fuel for the end of the stage here, for the rest of the stage, rather, which is at the end of lap 20. But you may have to save just a little bit. And, of course, if you're leading, not the case. If you're further back in the draft, you can, af you can afford to do that. But right now, how about this? Three wide, dead even up front. On the bottom now, it's Mark Beverly in the 97. Jay Stinson buried all the way back to third as Redinger, along with the 97, were able to get cleared down. That has now put the other Grand Center Racing teammate, Palm in the middle, four wide as they cross the stripe. Justin Bentley in the middle. Ooh, hold your breath. This is going to get really dicey here down into turn one. Everybody all still trying to hold it together. Bentley finally got to find a spot in line as it looked like Sam Boutwell, another one of the Grand Stand Racing teammates. Let that 16 truck jump down in line and regroup. Boy, Kevin Winker definitely showing you he's not afraid to be aggressive here early. And I mean, it's paying off for him in the sense of he's been making some good progress, but you got to have friends at the end of the race, usually in order to have a chance at winning it. And I don't know if Winker necessarily got a huge friend there in Justin Bentley, but phenomenal job by everybody to keep cool, keep their composure, and ultimately keep a nice little four wide formation down to turn one before they straightened it back up. Now, I should note that Kevin Winker, of course, is one of the Asphalt Outlaw Racing teammates in the field tonight. And if he can get up to that front row, he's going to be almost even with his other two teammates. See Haas Beverly pushing on the back of the 19. And then leading on the inside is Mark Beverly, who, of course, is another one of those Asphalt Outlaw Racing teammates. And so as we go back a little further here, we'll take a quick moment to make a stop here on the number three truck of Joey Hickox and talk about what we're expecting from him tonight, as actually there's his teammate Jay Stinson. He's actually rolling just one lane higher than Stinson right now. But of course, you know, Joey Hickox, last season's champion here for the Noma Truck Series. And along with that, that wasn't all. Got the job done over in the Super Speedway Series as well. Point with all this being that Joey Hickox knows how to get it done on any kind of track. But when it comes to Super Speedways, you know he's always going to be a threat. And so far here tonight, Showing that he's not scared to be up in the mix here early. Knows that he's got that one faster pair as kind of a backup plan if you need it. And knowing that he could potentially grab himself some stage points if he puts himself in the right spot. And then we go back on the opposite end of the spectrum to one of the rookies here. Bill Hales in the 53. First start was at Daytona, the first race of the season. Guess what? Got the job done. Got his first win of the season in the first race of the season. So now the driver out of Mount Washington, Kentucky, doesn't have to worry so much about getting that win out of the way. But boy, you know he'd like to add a second one, and we know how good he is at super speedways. 
So we'll see if he can maybe do it here tonight. Kevin Winker, another one to note. I believe it was the four of, I believe it was Russ Kilgore who is another threat, but we don't see him out here tonight. So nonetheless, though, across the line this time, it'll be nine laps complete already here at Talladega. That puts us just about halfway through stage number one. Mark Beverly still leading the way on the bottom. Justin Parham second leading the middle. Grandstand Racing right now second and third. Haas Beverly and Mark Beverly for Asphalt Outlaws Racing first and third. And then Kevin Winker who is now starting to pull up into this mix. Going to make it three trucks up in the top five for Asphalt Outlaws. Let me tell you what, Keith Prince has been doing a heck of a job here. I mean, he's been pushing on the back bumper of Kevin Winker for quite a while now. Tried everything and eventually once you've pushed the guy for long enough, you just run out of temps. And you see the gauges here, actually, if we take away the driver stats, just below the steering wheel, all those gauges. And while wherever we're looking at the replay, it won't actually show us live what those gauges are doing. Those do get red. You start blinking as your truck starts to get too hot. And I think of the case here for Keith Prince, he's just really trying to manage the temps right now. I mean, he's been pushing for a while, and he can't afford to blow that truck up here in the middle of traffic. Another thing that's not helping them on that third lane is that they really only have two trucks. Brody Venti on the inside, Aiden Lund. In the 32 just in front of him. Going to be coming up on the first lap truck of the night here already. Seems like everybody got off to a good start. Ryan Newman, the only man with trouble. As you see, he's got the Remax paint scheme on him. And he will indeed fall victim, or the first victim rather, to go on a lap down here tonight. The good news is as long as he doesn't have any major issues with this truck, he should and I say should, oh, well, never mind. He's going to go on the apron here. I was going to say just go high, get out of the way, and then stick with the pack, but he decides to go low instead. He does stay out on track, but he needs to get up to speed here. He's not going to be able to hang on to this pack. Does merge back up. Got one more coming by here. That's Tyler Clemis. Tyler got to be careful as well here. Looks like he's in danger of losing this lead pack. Is it's only 0.8 seconds behind, so he's still within a draft, but that gap will stretch out quickly if you're not full throttle here and... Still stretching out. It's going to be close here for Tyler Clemens and Ryan Newman, on the other hand. I don't know. It's going to be even closer for him on if he can keep that draft. Now, if not, he'll still be okay as long as he's the only truck to go lap down here within about the next nine laps or so because that'll be the stage. Here's a move. Joey Hickox to the outside of Haas Beverly. Looked for something and didn't get any takers. Nobody goes with him. Now Mark Beverly sees that his teammate leads the middle. He'll jump up to the top as Parm had gotten clear. And now this starts to get the teammates lined up. Oh, man, big stack up in the middle. Aiden Lund with a huge moment, able to catch it. Nicely done by the 32 truck. Sam Boutwell, Brody Benty now lined up. Two on the outside, make it three, four, five with the help of Winker, Prince, and one other. I think it's Jay Stinson, maybe? No, it is still Joey Hickox. Apologize for that. Jay Stinson glued third on the bottom there. And this third is fading in a hurry. So even with some help from the Cavalry for Joey Hickox, just nothing doing. And I think what you're going to see here is Winker trying to cycle to the front, or rather what would be the front of this third lane before he'll think about jumping back up a lane. And so we'll see. He's almost clear. Oh, Bentley, though, is going to beat him to the punch. 42's got to get clear as well. He does. Watch for Winker to follow that 16 up to the top of the racetrack. There they go. Justin Bentley had a run, took it at the right time. A little bit of a side draft on the 29 of Matthew Fritz. They cross the stripe. It'll now be eight laps to go here in stage number one. Justin Bentley still working the top with Kevin Winker, but no other takers in. It seems to just continue to be a case of cat and mouse of guys. Everybody wants to lead the top, but nobody wants to be the pushers. Kevin Winker says, I'm okay with either as long as we're near the front. As you see right now, he is continuing to push Justin Bentley for just about all he is worth. Three by three for row two and three up front, though. Two by two leads for row one, Mark Beverly and Justin Parham. Still out front here at Talladega. Man, I think now that you got two of those grandstand racing teammates lined up on the bottom, they're going to be a really, really tough task or a tough, yeah, we'll call it a tough assignment, if you will, to try to bring down here as the chemistry you know is there as we take a ride on board here with Kenneth Redinger. And now notice what he does here. First of all, notice the speeds, almost 190 miles an hour as they get down into turn number one. But as they work through the corner here, he's not pushing on the back bumper of Justin Parham through the corner. Instead, he gives them a little room, but as soon as they get to the back here, it gets a little cool, cool air. 
into the nose of that truck as O'Caution's out here. Trouble further back. We got one spinning. That's Aiden Lund, the rookie, in the 12 of Michael Lawrence as well. I think we might have had one, two, three others involved here. Both of the Gomes team drivers and teammates, and then Ronnie Morrison as well. Trouble early here. Strikes with about seven laps to go. Six when they cross the stripe here in stage one. So now this will set us up for a late race restart in the stage, but let's see how this one gets kicked up here. I'm assuming it starts up front with the 32 of Lund. That's exactly what it looks like here. But this almost develops really, really far back in the corner as these two had been offset of each other for a while. So we'll go and zoomed in first here and watch. So you see Beverly is a little out of line right there, about half a lane or so. Lund down. I mean, that's helping the 32 cool. You got to wonder if the 22 is maybe trying to do the same. And then I think I think Lund's just going to try to split him here. And as he goes to do so, can't tell from that angle if Haas came back down or if the gap just wasn't really there. So we'll have to go get an aerial shot of this one. Watch this here first from the chopper view. Again, I'm not 100% sure on why Haas was running up. I could take certainly a couple guesses here. The first thing that comes to mind is, of course, just cooling that truck off. He's been pushing for quite a while. I think the best way to maybe figure it out would be if we take an onboard view here with Haas Beverly and see if maybe he was trying to work that truck up the track or it was maybe a little bit more of an involuntary move. So here we go. Let's go. This is the onboard view here for Haas Beverly. Take a listen and take a look. That's really, really hard for me to say. I'm not sure if, like I said, he was just popping out to cool a little bit or was backing off to cool, was thinking about going third, just drifted up. I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but whatever the deal was here, you see A. Lund's kind of sitting, maybe thinking that that 22 is going to jump up. He doesn't here. And then see how the contact ensues. See, he's offset left right here, but doesn't hit him yet. And now he's really offset left, and now I think maybe the 32 tries the move, but it's just the lane was there, but the 32 doesn't quite fully commit. And then at the same time, again, the 22 doesn't look like he's, I mean, he's, he's not able to go anywhere now. And I think at that point, it was really a case of Aiden Lund maybe just slightly getting on the left rear of the 22, and I think that's what kind of ultimately sent him around. Now, I was trying to see if we could go to the left rear here. This might, well, that one doesn't really do much of anything here. See if we can go, nope, not going to get a good angle from there. So, nonetheless, I'll back this up a little bit more here. This is from the roll bar. Go back to, we'll go to the gearbox, actually. That's what we'll do here. The gearbox for Haas Beverly. And man, yeah, it's just slight, slight contact right there. And that's what gets him out of shape. And after that, I mean, the wreck's on from here. Watch this, 22 gets sent down. Pretty hard contact with the inside wall. Well, medium contact. Definitely not unrepairable, but may have to be a fast repair used right there. Ronnie Morrison, though, and just about everybody else, that was where this thing got really nasty. Aiden Lun, we saw go back up the track. That collects quite a few of them. Here we go, watch this. He spins down, the 32 is going to spin back up, and then he's going to get, I think, pushed back down the track here eventually as Keith Prince, a little bit of damage, but I think ultimately makes it through the 13. Derek Cat plows in, nowhere to go, and then there's Ryan Gomes and Riley Gomes. Same deal for them, the 69 with nowhere to go. This is where we're going to see a couple of the big hits too. Ronnie Morrison, it's a pretty good shot for the nine as well. He'd already lost his front bumper before then. Ronnie Morrison, that is, but this one's certainly doing a little bit of insult to injury. Is feel bad for Ronnie, man. It looked like he was through this initially here. Some damage, but pushes the 22 off, and then there's kind of the second incident that he gets involved in right there at the end. And here's another look at it here from TV1. So a couple guys that got pretty decent damage from this one, and then a couple that really didn't get any. There's the view from the backstretch cam. I was trying to see if we had anybody that did a really, really good job of somehow sneaking through this one. 
whenever you have a truck that comes back up the racetrack, it's so tough to decide what to do here. And yeah, you see Sam Boutwell. I thought maybe he did, but not able to. Watch a couple of these others, though. I think Matthew Fritz does. Yeah, Brody Benty especially. I don't know how he misses this. Same deal for Dylan. Pause. Phenomenal job. But then after that, just no dice for the rest of the field here. Give you one more look here from the onboard of Dylan. Pause. It's boy, what a job he did maneuvering through this one. Maybe just a little up tap there to Bill Hales, but similar to just a bump draft in terms of contact there. That's not going to affect either of those trucks. And then even Clinton would be with a nice last second read there to miss this one. So as we go back live up front, 17 of 94 laps now complete. This will put us in a restart with exactly three laps to go here in stage number one. So if we get another caution at this point, that will wrap the stage up. Justin Parr being scored as a leader. Kenneth Redinger in second. Mark Beverly in third. Jay Stinson fourth. And Kevin Winker rounding out your top five. Appreciate again everybody that's tuning in here. Enjoying your Saturday night, hopefully at least. You're watching the Noma Truck Series go at it. I know this was a track that there was a lot of optimism around. Some guys don't like it. Others love it. Of course, you can go with the mindset that it's the great equalizer. You got a chance. And others, of course, have to go into it with the idea of, well, maybe I have a better chance, but I have a great chance of getting wrecked as well. Nonetheless, Talladega always providing some great racing. I think it's setting us up here for a great stage finish. Green flag back in the air. 18 laps now complete at Talladega. It's a great restart from Justin Parr. Maybe too good of a restart. Any other track, you're trying to get as far ahead as you can. Talladega, not so much. So if you get too far out in front, you got to remember that once that other lane or even the lane behind you gets a run, it's going to be tough for them to figure out where to go with that run, whether it's splitting you or giving you a big shot that maybe you're not going to be able to handle. But it looks like so far so good. Everybody able to control their trucks really well as they rock it down the back straight away here. Moving into camera view now three wide as they enter turn number three. That middle surgeon big time here. Big run from Justin Parmo back on the bottom. Kenneth Redinger, Jay Stinson, those are not two teammates. The 19 and the 24 are, so I bring that up. You got to wonder here, does the 31 think about taking a look, and at what point does he do that move? I think for now he's content to stay behind as we saw Dylan Pauls jump up to the top. I was looking to see if, if he could get any help, but nobody is going to be a taker here. They'll stay three wide as now Keith Brent says, I'll dance, but I want to be the leader here. It looks like he thought better of that as well as he now jumps back in line. And, you know, when you go three wide, it's really not quite as simple as just jumping out of line. I mean, you can make that work, but ideally you want to set up a run and have at least one or two more trucks that are kind of on the same page. If you do that, you're going to be able to get to the front a lot quicker than if you have guys that aren't sure when you're going and if you go at a bad time. But Jay Stinson doing a great job here still on the outside, pushing Redinger. And I think what he's really focused on here is trying to save temps here for the last lap in the stage, which we're coming up on right here. Justin Parm, though, Mark Beverly still holding strong on the bottom. If the 24 gets clear, does he jump down and open the door for Stinson, or does he stay where he is? All right, here we go. White flag in the air for stage one. 2.65 miles left around to claim who's going to get the stage done. Redinger, boy, I think he got clear. It was certainly close, but he is not going to jump down. And now he won't have a choice but to stay up. No longer clear the 19. Does Stinson go up? And if he does, who does Wesley Phillips go with right here? you got to think that Kevin Winker is going to push here down the back. That is exactly what that 42 is doing. Three-truck tandem on the bottom versus a two-truck tandem up top. Mark Beverly, did he save enough temps? Looks like he is trying to push here from the rest or here to the rest of the way. Final time out of turn four for the stage. Stinson geared up for one more big push. Here we go, working our way into the triable. A little bit of bombing and weaving out. Oh, Parm getting out of shape. Mark Beverly trying to stick with him. He does. The inside will have enough. Justin Parm wins stage one at Talladega. All right, man. Caution is out. Caution is out. Boy, he's going to need that stage break caution to catch his breath. That was really, really close there at the end. As he was all out of shape coming through the tribal. Could certainly tell that Mark Beverly was pushing for all he was worth. Trying to get that 19, the stage victory, and he did just that. Driver out of Boiling Springs, South Carolina. He's already got a win on the season. And now, looking to see if he can tack on a second one for himself here. Tonight at Talladega. 
Bringing home second was Kenneth Redinger. Rounding out the podium for the stage was Mark Beverly. Jay Stinson and Kevin Winker finishing out your top five. All right, well, the whole field here are going to bring it down for fuel and tires on our first pit stop of the night. We are going to go side by side, take a quick break, but you will not miss a thing. Stick with us. We'll be right back at Talladega. Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway, live with the Rhino Linings 200 for the Noma Truck Series. Stage 1 complete. We saw your Stage 1 winner be Justin Parman. Quite a thriller to the finish. Not quite a photo finish, but a good one nonetheless. And after pit stops are complete, a little bit of a shakeup in the order here. It is now Keith Prince who's being scored as your leader. Clay Cantrell in second. Sam Boutwell third. Justin Bentley fourth. Kevin Winker in fifth. Kenneth Redinger, 6th, Justin Parham back in 7th now, Wesley Phillips 8th, Derek Cadden ninth, and Chase Stinson rounding out your top 10. And I was trying to see here, you know, with some of the guys that were able to gain that track position, you almost wonder if there was a little bit of strategy play maybe during the green that we missed, but yeah, it certainly looks like there was, and yeah, that would explain why these guys were able to get the track position they did. I believe this... I wonder if this was actually, no, I take that back. It doesn't look like there was, so it may have just been taking something a little different under this pit stop. They got some of these guys the track position that they got. And it's an interesting setup nonetheless, but as we get ready to see the green flag again here, as you see Stinson back in the pits, got the one to go signal. Let's pull in your stage winner here, Justin Parham, for a quick word on how he's feeling so far. Hey, Justin, this is Austin up in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, you get the job done in stage number one. 24 laps complete. Still got a long ways to go, but, well, you were sideways coming to the line there. Break us down a little bit of how that felt. Yeah, that was, uh, that one was a, scary, a little scary. By the time we was going into the travel, then I got a big hit from the uh, rear, and I could feel it just lifted my rear end up. So I had two tires on the front and was just holding on. <laughs> 
Well, I'll tell you what, you got the stage points, but, you know, we always talk about risk versus reward, and as close as that was, does that change your mindset here on how aggressive you are here in stage two, or do you still stay up on the saddle and try to get more stage points? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to stay out of trouble, but I'm going to try to work my way back up. Live, but if things look too high, I'll hang back and just play it by ear, see how it goes. Sounds like a good plan. Well, thanks for talking to us, and again, congrats on the stage win. Thank you. All right, Justin Parman. So there you go, that lifted the back tires up. And yeah, that's exactly what happens here sometimes when you get just a little bit too hard of a push. Not quite as eminent in these trucks as it is in some of the other series, mainly the Xfinity cars and the ARCA cars. But yeah, I mean, when you're pushing a guy hard enough, those back tires, they start to come off the ground a little bit. And that's not too good of a situation to be in in the travel, which is, of course, one of the most unstable portions of the racetrack. That and then, of course, off the corners where the truck unloads. Speaking of corners, though, you can push them. A lot more risky, but it's very doable in these trucks. I haven't seen it yet, but we'll see it here before this race is over. Two by two, working back into the trial. 24 laps complete. It'll be 25 as they cross the stripe. And so that will mean that we have exactly, looks like 24 laps to go green here flag, in flag. stage two. Green flag in the air, back racing at Talladega. Boy, Keith Prince got a massive jump on the restart right there. You see a little bit of a scuff in the right side door of his Sherman Williams Chevy Silverado. Oh, man, but he chose not to take it. He doesn't jump down. And now Clay Cantrell and Sam Boutwell, they've got a huge run. And now starting to trample over this outside, if you will. Look at the run at the inside, Scott. This will get two, maybe almost three trucks clear. Redinger not quite able to get enough to at least drop down. And don't forget, Boutwell is one of those grandstand racing teammates, so don't necessarily watch for the 24 to just immediately hop out of line right here. We'll see how long he stays loyal to his teammate, but so far, so good. As now things have single followed up front, at least for the first five trucks or so. Now we see Justin Parham jump out of line. Boutwell, I got to think, maybe he follows to do the same here. Yeah, maybe not. Nothing going yet. Justin Bentley, Kevin Winker. Trying to get a pull back on the 19 truck. And even further back than them is, oh no, it's going to be three wide here. Grandstand Racing going to get split out a little bit here. We'll see this Redinger jump up to try to catch his teammate. He will not. He's going to let those three lanes play out. And all that's going to do is stall everybody from there on back. Now look at the rest of the field here. Again, a long single file snake-like formation. And you do wonder if part of this now is a little bit of a fuel mileage game because we said it was exactly what 20 i think i said it was exactly 24 laps to go when we went back green and so man that's really really pushing it in terms of on fuel if these guys can make it if you save a little bit i think there's probably a good chance that you can however if you're up front leading either of these lanes right now such as justin bentley or clay cantrell and i just don't know if you can but let's fade back here a little bit take a ride on board with one of these guys and see if it sounds like that's what they're doing here as there's Haas Beverly hit up Jay Stinson here, right just behind the 22. Yeah, you can hear it in his throttle tracing. He is not full throttle. He doesn't have to be right now. And all that off throttle time, and I'm not saying he's completely off the gas, but he's probably about 75 to anywhere between, actually probably anywhere between 80 to 90% throttle. And that adds up over the course of a run, because again, you're not burning as much fuel. And so Stinson certainly seems like he's potentially playing the fuel mileage game. How about your Daytona winner, Bill Hales? So he's trying to catch up a little bit. And then further back, we got Clinton Woodby here in the 92. Taking a listen to see if he's trying to save any fuel himself. And it doesn't sound like it. So definitely not as much as some of your leaders. Maybe a little bit, though, still. It's more between 90 and 100% throttle there for Clinton Woodby. But then up here, this is where... You're not saving any fuel if you're either of these two guys, Justin Bentley or Kevin Winker. That's because you're leading the way, breaking all that wind. You got to keep the throttle to the floor. And now we're starting to see a little bit of a breakup here between what is becoming a front pack and a second pack. The second group, they need to get it together pretty quick. And you can tell a couple of guys are changing up their strategies as Redinger has dropped out of that lead pack. I think that's because he knows it's going to be a bit of a fuel mileage race as well. So watch for him to jump in behind Derek Cat. He does just that, gets in front of Haas and Beverly. And so now the single file action will extend all the way just about to the back. But it is Kevin Winker and Justin Parham who lead the way. 
You gotta wonder here if one, if not both of these two are expecting that there is gonna be another caution before this stage is over. And they feel like it's worth risking it. To gain that track position, oh my goodness. Justin Parham was clear, but it was not by much right there on the bottom for him and Justin Bentley. That was a really, really close call. And now as Winker just for a moment got left on the outside, quickly gets some more assistance. This time it's from the 47 truck of Sam Boutwell. And more trucks going to jump up here. It's Clay Cantrell, and everybody actually ditched Parham as Bentley went up as well. And so the 19 shuffles back to fourth, make it fifth on the inside here for the moment. We'll see if Boutwell chooses to jump down here if he stays up top. Looks like he's committed to the top four now. And those guys that are staying single file choosing to save fuel, you got to be careful here. Again, you cannot lose this pack. Otherwise, trying to save fuel is not going to matter because if you don't have a draft to pull off of, you can't save fuel anyway. Ryan Gomes back in 25th with Riley Gomes. Aiden Lunn off pace as well. Now, everybody is on the lead lap currently, but I think those three, I'm not really sure what caused them to lose the pack there. But nonetheless, they're going to be hoping for either another caution or to get to the end of stage two here pretty quickly so they can get back grouped up with the field and obviously hope to not go lap down, but I don't know if it's quite going to work out that way. And so as we look back there at Aiden Lund, who we talked about right now is the furthest back, can't forget about Ryan Newman, who actually went a lap down in stage one, but he got that lap back and taking full advantage of it now as the 51 truck is up nine positions from where he started this race at in seven. Going to be looking to break into the top five soon. The 42, though, of Kevin Winker continues to lead the way here at Talladega. 47 of Sam Boutwell on the outside with a push from Justin Parham. I said continues to lead the way, but that was a relatively recent change. And he got some existence with that one as well. But the field roars by the digger cam. That was a famous cam that they used to have, too. They don't have it anymore in real life. I believe it was at one point either called the Digger or the Gopher Cam. That was one of the favorite cams that they always had at these super speedways. Kind of gives you a better perception of just the speed that these guys run down in the corners once they get near that camera. Giving us great views tonight, as is one of the newer cams, the Drone Cam. Which follows these guys down the front stretch, hovers a little bit up top just above them once they get into the trioval. But all Kevin Winker right now as he's got back to the front now. We know how aggressive Winker likes to be in getting back to the front. I think the question now might become a little bit of how aggressive is he willing to be now that he is at the front. Does he throw any sort of blocks this early if anybody else has a run? Does he try to control the 16 who sits just behind him? Or does he ride right now and maybe sit okay with a couple of the lead changes that are going on? At least for the moment. Brody Benty up 23 positions, make it 24 from where he started this race at. That now has him as your biggest mover as new scheme, driver out of new Philadelphia. And right now he is your new leader. See if he can hold on as, yep, sure enough, he's gonna be able to jump down to the bottom of the racetrack. So the 63 is now your leader here. We'll see how long Kevin Winker sticks behind Brody Benty here. Got a couple choices. He can either push until he gets hot, make the move now, or honestly just stick here. I mean, if. You know, at this point, with the way things are sorting out, I think if it's even close on fuel, you might as well save it if you're in this lead pack. I mean, you know that you can save fuel and maintain track position if you're anywhere in the top five. Now, I get that if you're the guys further back, maybe you commit to saving a little bit harder so you can go a little bit sooner. But I just don't really know that anybody at the absolute front, maybe front one or two as of right now, are going to make it, at least with as hard as they're pushing for the moment. 33 laps complete here now at Talladega. Don't forget, last week we had an off week. But the week before that, we were actually at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Boy, that was a pretty fun one in and of itself. Of course, have Matthew Dyer in the booth with us for that one. Not here tonight, but we may have him a couple more times before the season is all said and done. Now, in terms of tracks that we go to, We've got a couple of an interesting mix, if you will, of tracks coming up after this one here tonight. Next week, we're going to head to the Lady in Black. That's right. It's Darlington Raceway for 130 laps there. That one's going to be a lot of chaos, a lot of struggle, but a lot of fun at the end of the day. After that, it's the Tricky Triangle Pocono Raceway, followed by Kentucky, and then Charlotte Motor Speedway for the longest race of the season on May 18th. That will round things up. And from the looks of the schedule here, looks like we do have at least one one more off week after Darlington. So, again, it'll be, we'll be right back next week. 
course, with the Darlington race. But after that, we'll take an off week again. As now, look at this on track. Before we talk any more about that schedule, front two have absolutely pulled away here. As now, Kevin Winker, he's going for the lead. I, I mean, this is, I, what's the point? It's two trucks. This is really interesting to me here for what Kevin Winker's trying to do. Now, granted, this if this doesn't tell you that everybody else is saving fuel, I don't know what does. And it's still a little bit of a fuel battle even up here. I mean, 173 is about the most these trucks will top out at by themselves. And back here was the draft where everybody is, nobody wants to be the leader back here. And, oh, we did we just have some pit stops? We did. It looks like the 9 and the 55. That's both Gomes drivers. And looks like they were, again, not near the lead pack. So that's not going to affect anything. But... Everybody back here that continues to kind of struggle to decide on a strategy is, oh, man, hold the breath. This is going to get interesting. Big run up top as they're stalled out. Winker and, man, look at the run from Keith Prince and Parham. That'll get both of them clear as Prince will drop all the way to the bottom. And Parham not going to try to do the same. Looks like he's wanting to stay up top to see if he can gain just a little bit more here. And, boy, that got really, really interesting for a second. But ultimately, it looks like it sorted itself out as now Riley Gomes going to jump three wide to see if he can get any takers here. I think that's just the nine trying everything to get at least that lap back here as he knows that the 55 is trying to get one as well. And he'd rather see him get the lucky dog and he'll get it the hard way. But I don't know if it's quite going to work out that way. Now, the 19 and the 42 going to get by here. And so from what I've seen, I mean, I just don't see any way that Winker can make it. I think he's the main guy that has my kind of fix, if you will, in terms of, I just don't see how he could with how much fuel he's been burning being up front as long as he has. But they are three wide now for the back towards the middle of the pack. We'll keep an eye on this as now it's would-be Bill Hales in the middle, Dylan Paws, try to make something happen. So I talked about what rounds out the regular season, and then, of course, the all-star race this season is going to be at New Atlanta. That's going to be a fun one we saw the racing that New Atlanta can provide in the Super Speedway Series. Good to see these guys going there for the Truck Series as well. And then as for the playoff schedule, Nashville Super Speedway is where we'll get things kicked off in the round of 16. Then we'll head to Las Vegas Motor Speedway for 135 laps in Sin City. After that, we move on to the round of eight, eliminate eight of those drivers that were in the round before. We head to Chicagoland, followed by Kansas, rounding out the entirety of the season. The Championship 4 is making a return this season to Texas Motor Speedway. I know that's Joey Hickox, one of his favorite tracks, and didn't disappoint. And, you know, I agree. And interestingly enough, I mean, I know a lot of people aren't a fan of Texas in real life, but it races really good in iRacing, all things considered. Officials there this week, and the trucks are probably the best series there. So a very, very fun track that we're going to be heading to in Texas, and a very fun track to add here tonight. The racing has not disappointed up to this point. Do you want to give a shout-out to a couple of the people watching in the chat here tonight? Nancy Hickox says, good evening, everyone. Good to see you, Nancy. Mark Stevens, hope you're having a good night. As Raymond Daniel Sr. says, the Manny Rays Mafia is out watching tonight. Glad to see it. Title sponsor of the series, of course, the Manny Rays Noma Truck Series. James says, let's go racing. And Woogie Wolf says, are there any pros in here tonight? There are not. The Noma guys, though, still some of the most talented guys in the sim. And showing it off here tonight. Again, only one caution so far off of maybe a little bit of a nonverbal miscommunication between Aiden Lund and Haas Beverly. But since then, it's been clean and green. But a lot of three-wide action going on as now the 92 and the 53 have lost help from the 99 of Dylan Paws. But how about the job that Riley Gomes did over the course of the last couple laps to get himself back in charge out in front? And now the 9 saying... Please, guys, wreck and don't involve the 55 as he'd get his lap back, as would the 55 of Ryan Gomes. I don't know if it's quite going to pan out that way, but Dylan Paws in the 99 looking a little uncomfortable right now with the way that truck's getting pushed around, but he's holding on to it at least for the moment. By the 31 of Jay Stinson, by the way, that's who's pushing. Two by two off of turn number four, the nine of Riley Gomes still on the bottom with Kevin Winker in tow. The 19 of Justin Parham third in that line. And all that through wide action that we had just about a couple of laps ago has now faded and migrated down back to two by two. So we have now hit officially 40 laps complete in this race, two away from halfway and nine away from the end of the stage. Michael Lawrence on the outside here. We'll see if he tucks back down or continues to try to roll the top here to see if he can catch up to the back of this top lane. 
And I think the reason that the trucks are so much better here than anything else is, uh, well, a couple things. I mean, the biggest thing being that they punch the biggest hole in the air of any of the series, part of that being because of the shape, of course, of a truck and the giant spoilers that they have. But the package that iRacing has with these trucks is you're constantly, I mean, you can bumper slam guys in these trucks without having really any issue. Now, we haven't seen it much tonight, but unlike what we may be seeing in the Xfinity Series, for example, which, of course, they race over in the Super Speedway Series, you don't have to be as delicate with these trucks. Again, if you're center with the guy, you can hit him pretty hard, and that goes along with you're also able to push in the corners as long as you're centered as well. And three wide is plentiful, and tonight we've seen just about every lane have its fair share of working. Part of that, of course, as a result of that hot track temp, keeping everybody honest in terms of how much they can push without having to cool the truck down. That allows a different lane to get a run as track temp was 129 when we started this race. Looks like now it has climbed just a degree up to 130 as it is 2 o'clock sim time. And so all of a sudden, I'm not sure if everybody realized that they're good to go on fuel or they realize they're not good to go on fuel. But after all the saving we saw in the first half of this stage or so, Things have gotten a lot more aggressive now. 41 going to be 42 laps complete as they cross the stripe this time around. Bill Hales, there he is in the 53, third in line. Not quite going to get clear as it's only going to be Stinson and Clinton Woodby that do so. By the way, Clinton Woodby talked about how much speed he brings to the table every week. Don't forget, got the win at last time we were, of course, out with the Noma Truck Series at the Brickyard. And boy, you knew how bad he had been wanting to win. It had been, well, honestly, what felt like kind of a long time for the, the 92 with all the speed he had. But now that he got that first win out of the way, I think that he's going to have a lot more speed from here on out. And you knew he'd be good when we came to any sort of super speedway. Showing all the talent here tonight so far as is Bill Hales. Here we go. Pit stops from some of the guys that are confident that they cannot make it here. Boy, it's quite a few. Let me just tell you now, is everybody getting clean here? I think they all do as they all work their way down. And not too surprised to see this in the sense of, we knew that they were either good to go or they weren't good to go based off the fact that they were racing as hard as they were. And when you get to a point where you realize you're not going to be good to go, you might as well just gain as much track position as you can. And here we go, Kevin Winker leads them in here. We play this pit stop to see if everybody gets in clean. Hard on the brakes here as Kevin Winker gets slowed down. And so does everybody else. So a really nice pit stop there as it looks like should be just about fuel only here to get yourself to the end of this stage unless, of course, you're planning on staying out at the end of the stage. So trading off potentially some stage points here for some track position. And off turn four, do we see any more takers here? This time we do not as Haas Beverly, who is involved in that only caution incident of the night, now finds himself back in the lead here at Talladega. And I'm looking and that 22 truck looks, of course, Really cleaned up from what we saw earlier where he had some front bumper damage after that contact with the inside wall and that first wreck. But since then, looks like looks a lot better in the 22. You see Ryan Gomes leading the outside right now, even with that fourth row. Clinton would be Jay Stinson just in front of that. There's the 63 of Brody Benty. And, ooh, got to wonder if that means the 63. Maybe got a speeding fine here during his pit stop. I said everyone got in clean. I meant in terms of no issues actually getting on. But if you get in too fast, you get yourself a speeding penalty, which it looks like may have happened here to Brody Benty. All right, here we go. Coming off a of turn four again. Do we see any stops from anybody this time? No, we don't. And so we'll make it yet another lap. This will put us at 45 laps complete. And I believe that pit road actually does indeed close with two laps to go on the stage. That would be coming to lap 47. So these guys have two more chances to pit right here, either this time or next time. But if they don't, then I think that's assuming that they all think they can make it. I think most of them probably can. A couple guys, though, that it could potentially be a little bit close as now we're seeing three wide again further back as now that we have more guys either a lap or multiple laps down, desperation starts to set in to get yourself back on that lead lap before the stage. Riley Gomes, Ryan Gomes still going for their lap back. Brody Benty, though, getting ready to do the same as the 63 is third or on the third lane trying to get clear of Joey Hickox. You see Aiden Lund has now fallen two laps down. Not sure where he currently runs at the moment. But it looks like he is in the middle of this pack, actually. And these three right here, not too concerned about their lap time yet unless the leaders pit. But as it stands right now, Kevin Winker, Clay Cantrell, and Justin Bentley in a three-truck trio, if you will. 
with 46 laps complete just riding around till we get to the end of this stage and now we see Mark Beverly with a big push to Brody Benty up top look at the run from the 63 trying to get him back on the lead lap right here remember he doesn't have to necessarily get all the way back to the lead lap as that is one of the DC Motorsports drivers the big thing though is if he doesn't get back on the lead lap he's got to be the first guy a lap down and He's in a heated battle himself right now between him and Riley Gomes. And who's going to get the job done here? Riley with a truck in front of him. That's Haas Beverly. And none of those guys are associated teammates except the 97 and the 22. Haas Beverly looking for some redemption here to see if he can get the stage win. I believe it'd be his first stage win of the season. He's going to have to hold on here for two more laps. Stinson and others starting to fade here a little bit. Got to wonder if that fuel question starts to set or starting to maybe set back in here a little bit. By Stinson being this far back, they got to be careful. I know I've said it before, but let's hear what the throttle input's looking like. I mean, you can definitely see part of this could be because he doesn't have a trap, but the RPMs are... Oh, Reckon, Reckon big up front. Huge hit for Haas. Beverly, multiple others. Caution is out, and this will end the stage. Man, what happened here? thought for sure these guys were in the safest position of anybody and certainly that was not the case and you got to feel for Haas Beverly in the sense of if he used his faster pro already this could be a night ender in terms of a race winning truck he's got some significant damage there on a couple different corners of the truck Riley Gomes Aiden Lund a couple others involved I'm just not really sure where this all went wrong did I mean Oh, they come up on a lapper here, and it's almost like that's where it starts. All right, well, here we go. We're going to go to the chopper view first off. All right, so up ahead there, that's the 51 of Ryan Newman. Now, the 22 at this point is saying, hey, man, can you go low? Can you go low? Get off the racetrack or go high, do something. 51 doesn't at that point. Haas jumps low, and then at that point, 51 tried to jump low, sees the 22 go down. He comes back up. The 9 of Riley Gomes not able to miss him in time. And then that turns the 51 up the track into the 53. The 63, rather, Brody Bentsy. And then Haas Beverly gets tagged. That turns him up the track as well. He takes a big shot into the outside safer barrier. And now at this point, the 9 spinning. 97 spinning. Just these guys with nowhere to go. Looks like all in all, it's going to collect four or five trucks. Mark Beverly with heavy damage as well. And, you know, I, I think this was a couple things here. The first thing is, I think that realistically, I think Haas maybe got a little too, I don't know what the word is, maybe antsy here in the sense of, first of all, I don't think going to the apron is the right choice there. There's definitely a lane up, too. Brody Bentsy's giving him room. Now, granted, I know he's expecting the 51 to go down, but at the same time here, it looks like the 51 was maybe going to get down here at the last second. And I know that's, of course, too close to call, so I'm not going to use that one as any justification. I think the main one is that he definitely had a chance to potentially go up a lane there. But nonetheless, they avoid chaos here. So by no means is this Haas Beverly's fault. He's just trying to avoid the 51. But as the 51 sees that, he's going to come back up the racetrack right here. And that's where things are going to get a whole lot more interesting. As he does so, again, Riley Gomes just not quite able to check up in time. That sends him up into the 63, and then Mark Beverly's trying to shoot the gap here. But unfortunately, as Riley Gomes got down the track, gets into the 22, sends him up the racetrack, and there's the big hit. It ultimately rips off all the parts and pieces from the 22 and the 97. Watch this again here from the zoom cam. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I do agree that if you're Ryan Newman in that case, you gotta you got to have a decision figured out before then. I mean, it's just... This isn't one of those tracks where you can make that last second decision as if we were at a mile and a half or potentially not even move your line and have the leader go around. This is, you know, one of those situations where if you're going to stay on the bottom, there's got to be some communication. And I just wonder if maybe that went wrong there. If somebody didn't get the memo, I'm not sure what happened. But usually this is where the leaders are screaming either stay on the bottom or go top or the truck that's getting ready to get lapped is saying, hey, I'm staying bottom or I'm going top. But certainly seems like from everything we saw with that wreck there was neither or rather no communication there and it led to a pretty big one back and give you a couple more angles of this one here I'm gonna go take one more view in the TV cam at this and then I'm gonna go to an onboard view here for Haas Beverly
A lot of big impacts in that one. That's definitely, like I said, that will definitely be a couple fast pairs gone early. And so, in fairness to Haas, here we go. Watch this. This is how quick things happen here. And he's got to make a pretty quick decision. Feels like 51's not going to get out of the way, so he jumps low. There's some contact there. And then if he tries to start re-merging, that's when he gets turned. And to the outside wall he goes. All right, so as we go back live, getting ready to hopefully get the one to go signal. Stage is official. And I believe the way these guys do it, it's at the time of caution. And so we're going to try to go an onboard view here, potentially with Jay Stinson, just somebody here to see when that caution actually flew. And nothing yet, nothing yet. Let's see if we can go up a little further here, potentially, to Ryan Gomes. See if he can show us where that caution comes out at. Still nothing, still green, still green. There's the caution right there at the last second. And it looks like with the way we see everything at that point, Ryan Gomes was a lap down. So he gets a break there. But in terms of guys that were on the lead lap, I believe Michael Lawrence was. And boy, it was so, so close between him and Haas Beverly. But it looks like, I, I think the 12s got it. Wow, man, it's really, really close, though. Too hard to call from there. Get an official word at some point if we can, but as we get ready to go back green, no Haas Beverly not too happy, but let's see if he can explain to us a little bit on what happened there with that one. Hey, Haas, this is Austin up in the booth. You got a copy. Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? Well, I'm good, man. Unfortunately, I know you're not too happy right now, but we want to kind of try to figure out what exactly went wrong there? We saw the lap truck. Was there just some miscommunication between you guys and the lapper? What what went wrong there? No, he just didn't move up, dude. I I said, hey, uh, lapper, move up, move up. And he says, yeah, I am, I am. And time I got to him, we were all, I got a guy on my outside. Where am I going to go? Yeah, well, I mean, you certainly look like you played the strategy right up to that point. I mean, you got the damage fixed, or at least some of it. You think you might still have a shot here by the end of this thing? Nah, I got about five, four or five minutes of optionals to do yet, so I don't know. We'll see how she holds up. All right, well, we appreciate you giving us some insight there. And again, sorry to see it, but thanks for talking to us. Yep, thanks, pal. Moss Beverly can hear the dejection. He's not happy about it again. I mean, you can't blame him right there. So miscommunication at the end of the day is what it's going to go down as. Stage two in the books. Getting ready for the final stage, which will now, with that caution coming before, Make stage three a little bit longer than it was initially expected to be. So it'll be 44 laps as they cross the strike. Green flag back in the air for Jay Stinson and Michael Lawrence. Stinson with a phenomenal restart. Lawrence not quite the same ordeal. But the 53 of Bill Hales and the 92 of Clinton Woodby. Quickly to the aid, to the back bumper, if you will. Now it's a side-by-side -side drag race as teammates up top versus two non-teammates, if you will, on the bottom. And Stinson is going to indeed get clear. I was waiting to see if the run would develop enough, and it does by plenty. Doesn't take it, though. The 31 chooses to stay up top. Man, I know if it was the end of the race, it's not a bad choice, but it just seems like early could be a little risky. But Jay feeling like that top is rolling, and it's the place to be. And so he'll keep his Rhino Linings, number 31, Chevy Silverado, up there. By the way, Rhino Linings, again, sponsor of tonight's race. And then Manny Ray's the sponsor of the Noma Truck Series along with multiple others that do a ton for this series. And races like this, some of the best ones to watch, some of the best ones to race. I know a lot of guys were excited for tonight, and so far it has not disappointed. Two cautions, which what realistically probably should have either been none or only one. But besides that, again, the racing has honestly been really, really good here tonight. Nobody's had any hiccups besides that. Pit Road, the one green flag cycle we had for some of the field was clean. And now we see Kevin Winker trying to work the top of the racetrack. Doesn't look like he's getting any help, at least for the moment. We said 44 laps to go for the stage, or 44 laps in the stage, rather. That'll be exactly a one-stop in terms of pits from here if it goes green. One green flag pit stop, rather. And again, you can make it probably somewhere between 22 to 25 laps on fuel, depending on how much you save, how much you're burning. As, ooh, Ronnie Morrison. Man, I thought he was going to split Kenneth Redinger. I was going to say he can, but... It's not going to work very well because he's got Justin Parm just behind him. That's a teammate for that 24 truck. Redinger, of course, the Noma Truck Series champion, not last season, but the season before. 
first full season that we broadcasted the Noma Truck Series. Season two last season, back season three this year. It's just the racing that they put on each and every season. I mean, whether it's the same guys, new guys, or a mix of, as we've seen this season, and pretty big mix of. I mean, we've already seen a couple races, well over 30 truck fields, so attendance is there, and the racing has been there as well. Certainly what you'd love to see, and so far, still a lot of guys with the opportunity to snag their first win of the season here tonight. And I mentioned Kentucky. Well, we were in the Asphalt Outlaw Racing Truck Series a few weeks back, handful of weeks back or so. Jay Stinson got the win in the trucks there at Kentucky. So he's got that one circled on his list. Maybe looking to see if he can get a win a couple races before that here tonight. Potentially build some momentum. As, oh, Stinson gets split. Maybe no. Chase Greer checked up. Boy, I thought he split him for a moment. I'm not sure what happened there, but saw Stinson ducking up almost to give the eight air, but then it seemed like he got too far. Oh, what a mistake that was is now it's going to put a couple new guys up front. Joey Hickox, first time taking a peek at the lead for the number three truck here tonight as it's still Redinger on the bottom. Oh, one in the wall, Brody Benty. He is going to hold on to it here. Brody Benty, man, what a moment that one was right there for the 63. You can see the contact was certainly recognizable by the damage that he sustained on the right side of that truck. As he'll jump in line just in front of the 15 there of Tyler Clemens. And I'm not sure what got him out of shape, but again, great save there by Brody Benty. Three by three, Sam Boutwell pushing his teammate Justin Parham in the middle. Kenneth Redinger leading on the bottom with a push from Ronnie Morrison. And the three of Joey Hickox leading up top with a push from his teammate, Zach Stevens. See that top... Not quite rolling right now, maybe as much as we would expect. And I'm telling you, part of that is if you're Joey Hickox, you've got to ride closer. Not quite at the point where you got to ride on the door of that inside line, but he's, he's got to get closer. He's riding above that white line just about through the turns. And the whole kind of goal, if you will, the general idea when you're up top is you side draft both lanes below you. Well, I guess I should say the one lane below you, which is side drafting the lane below you to keep those guys' momentum from surging through the corner since they have the short way around, and then you automatically get the momentum down the straights. But I think right now Joey's still trying to field out a little bit. Him and Zach Stevens, along with Matthew Fritz, should have noted that that's actually a three-truck tandem kind of in the middle there or on the top. But I think he's just trying to get comfortable right now, and the more he does, the more they'll start slowly creeping down and pinching that middle lane a little bit. But right now, again, very content to stay up the racetrack. Just try to see if they can do this thing the old-fashioned way by just straight out, out pushing both of the other lanes. What about Matthew Fritz? The driver out of Middletown. Always like the uh, driver picture he's got there. Assuming that, might, that must be his cat. Sweet little fella. And, but Matthew Fritz. Oh, actually, I didn't even notice that, but he's got... This might be a first. He's got that same picture that we're looking at now on the back. Looks like on the back of his truck here. There's got to be a better view we can get of this here. And there you go. Yeah, he does. And so that was a cat he must have used to have. And so Matthew Fritz racing with it tonight. Looking to see if he can get the job done. Third on the outside, but that is the Manny Ray's Mafia truck. Always got the Manny Ray's sponsor on there. Certainly appreciates all they do for the series. And now back to 2x2 two two up front. Oh, man, that got really close. 2x2 two two for a moment, I should say. Looks like Joey and Zach are still committed to the top here as the middle fades to just two trucks. And so 3x3 three three into turn number one. Joey Hickox side by side with the 46 of Wesley Phillips, who we haven't talked a lot about tonight. He's been fast out of the gate at just about every track we've been to, but we had a chance to talk to him last week. He said, you know, I said, how you feeling about a super speedway? He said, good. You know, a super speedway is one of those tracks that gives everybody kind of a chance. So feeling optimistic, but at the same time, knowing it's not going to be as technical and a little bit more of luck involved than maybe some of the other tracks we go to. You got to have about 75% skill, 25% luck just to have a chance at the end of these races. And right now, he's certainly showing the skill factor of it. Question is going to be, will he be one of the trucks that can avoid the ever looming big one, which we haven't seen yet? We've certainly seen our fair share of a couple wrecks, but have not seen the big one yet, which usually takes out at least 10 trucks or so. 
I just don't think you can rule it out by the time this race is all said and done. Uh, let's go back and get an update on a couple of the guys in the field. Aiden Lund, currently two laps down, but he is running with the lead pack. We'll see if he's able to get one of those laps back the hard way. Or maybe hope for a couple cautions, get a lucky dog or a wave around. Brody Benty as well. He is a lap down, kind of in the same boat, but he is battling a couple other guys for the lucky dog, I believe, at least at the moment. One of those being Riley Gomes, and that's it. Now, as for Haas Beverly, he has lost touch with the lead draft. Let's take a look at his speeds. 162 is what he's topping out at right now. So he is about 10 miles an hour under speed just by himself. Not sure how that truck would perform in a draft. So hopefully he can stay on the lead lap long enough for us to get a caution. I'm not sure what he'll do here, but definitely not the way the 22 saw his night going here about 20 minutes ago when he was leading. And so if he can go and get the rest of that damage fixed, he might have a chance still the truck getting up to 164. Not sure if his RPMs are damaged or if it's all aero. We'll have to see what happens here as we continue on. And then Ryan Newman, currently the last truck on the, not on the lead lap, but with this lead pack, rather. He is down seven spots from where he qualified. Tyler Clemens just in front of him in 22nd. Justin Bentley, 21st. Derek Cat in 20th. Mark Beverly, 19th. Clinton Woodby in 18th. Matthew Fritz in 17th. Clay Cantrell in 16th, Matthew Fritz actually in 16th, those two just switched, still in pause in 15th, Zach Stevens in 13th, Ryan Gomes, Zach Stevens back 14th, rather Ryan Gomes in 13th, Michael Lawrence in 12th, Chase Greer in 11th, Joey Hickox in 10th, Kevin Winker 9th, Jay Stinson 8th, Bill Hales in 7th, Keith Prince in 6th, Wesley Phillips in 5th, Lonnie Morris in 4th, Kenneth Redinger in 3rd, Sam Boutwell in 2nd, and Justin Parham. Currently being scored as your leader here at Talladega. All right, well, these guys went back green, and we, you know, we bring up the pit window and all that stuff. We went back green with 41 laps complete. And so the farthest they can go on fuel from there is probably somewhere, if I had to guess, maybe... Oh, man, it's close. I mean, I'm trying to think here. If these guys wanted to, they could probably go all the way from about, I don't know, we'll just call it... 41 to about 60, we'll call it 63, no, I take that back, sorry, I apologize, I wasn't doing the math right here, I'll have it to you here in just a moment, point being that they can go about 22 laps, I think, from when we did go back green, which is I think lap 51, yeah, that's more like it, so I meant to say 73 maybe, give or take a couple laps is what I would think we would expect to see that final green flag pit stop. And we'll see who brings them in first and how many people go along with it. And now here we go on the outside. It's going to be Riley Gomes and Bill Hales. Keith Prince taking a look. Does he go? He doesn't. Started drifting up as if he was going to, but quickly, I guess, thought better of it. Riding on the deck lid here of Sam Boutwell. He's getting a push from Wesley Phillips now in the middle of three wide. Remember, Riley Gomes, that is not for position. That is fighting for the lucky dog position or to get a lap back. Wow, that was another close moment there between Bill Hales and Wesley Phillips as they got into turn number one. Everybody, though, able to hold it together. All this three-by-three three action will have to slowly but surely simmer out probably with, I don't know, maybe three or four laps before pit stops. And that's usually the sign that guys are indeed getting ready for a pit stop as Riley Gomes gets clear of the middle. Ooh, thought about sticking there for a moment. Jumps down, though, just at the last second. And Brody Benzie saw that, and he realizes now he has to get up on the wheel and try to get his way back to the front here to have a chance. And so the three-wide action continues. Jay Stinson, his teammate Joey Hickox, though, have fallen way back here in this pack in terms of at the end of the three-wide action. And the guys that we still have sitting single file towards the back here, maybe saving a little fuel or just playing it safe. Derek Cat, Justin Bentley, Tyler Clemens, and Ryan Newman. We are going to be officially at 30 laps to go and across the strike next time. Oh, man. Oh, man. Keith Prince, he keeps getting loose. Or excuse me, not loose, but tight off the corners. And that is not the first time that he has washed up. And I'm telling you, he keeps washing up. And it's getting me really nervous that on one of these ones, he's going to get into somebody. And that's not going to end too well. But it looks like he was indeed able to save it and hold on yet again. Should take a lot on board here with Sam Boutwell. See there, a little bit of his gauge from the roll bar view. As that's Riley Gomes on his inside. So two by two now for the first two rows. 
53 of Hill Hills. Kevin Winker, they stepped out of line, looking to make a run all the way to the front here. There's been a lot of three wide here tonight. We did not even think we saw this much three wide at Daytona. But again, Talladega is, along with being, you know, a little bit longer in distance, the start finish line being placed at a different spot. It's also much wider than Daytona, so you can go three, even four wide, which we saw at one point here tonight as well. And the other unique characteristic, of course, which I just kind of briefly mentioned right there. Ooh, Boutwell, get it? Yeah, he does, just barely. Is that the start-finish line is probably about 100 yards or so, maybe 1,000 feet, whatever you want to call it. After the trial, well, I'm not going to call it 1,000 feet. I think that's a little too far. About 100 yards, I'd say, after the end of the trial. Well, and that sets up things a lot differently than at Daytona because instead of the bottom having the advantage coming to the checkered, it's actually the top usually. As again, top rolls better down the straights, and there is that brief portion of straightaway just out of the travel to the checkered, but that outside usually starts to roll again. Sometimes that's all you need. So we'll see how guys set themselves up towards the end of this race on if you choose the outside or do you just play it safe and stick with the inside. Nonetheless, right now, nobody playing it safe as they continue to go three by three with Bill Hills leading the way here at Talladega now as he pokes out in front with Kevin Winker. Remember the chemistry those two had at Daytona. But of course, Bill Hill's got the win. Oh, he's not all the way down. Bill got a drop. Yes, he does. Man, a little bit of a brief hesitation there. Wesley Phillips knew he couldn't push until he was square with the 53. It caused a bit of a stack up there, but everybody saves it. You can definitely tell, though, that the moves, they're getting riskier and riskier, and almost seems like somebody just set the timer on the ticking time bomb. And it's just going to be a matter of time before it goes kaboom. Now, if we can get to this green flag stop, that might change things around a little bit as every time that we have a green flag stop, we have a tendency to, I like to call it thinning the herd, if you will, as some trucks will lose the pack, either from not getting a good pit stop, getting a penalty, or potentially trying a different strategy pitting later or sooner and losing the pack that way. Remember, you got to go in with, honestly, at least two other trucks, at least if you want to maintain speed out of the pits and you got to hope that the trucks that you go in with also get a good pit stop and that you get a good pit stop in order to stick with them. So now as it's going to be 68 laps complete, we cross the stripe this next time. That will be putting pit stops in just about a handful, maybe a couple more laps from then. And so with that knowledge, we are going to take a quick side-by-side -side break. We will be back in time for pit stops. At least we should be nonetheless. Stick with us. We'll be right back at Talladega.
Back live at Talladega Super Speedway for the Rhino Linings 200. The Manny Ray's Noma Truck Series 24 laps to go. And still that one green flag pit stop expected as now you see the desperation to get to the bottom of the racetrack starting to set in. Now again, that window borderline open right now, definitively open in about the next two to three laps or so. So we'll see when guys decide to bring it down for that final fuel stop as Winker, boy, just barely found a spot in line there in front of Riley Gomes. And we're still trying to get that sorted out there for just a moment, but Wesley Phillips now being scored as your leader. Keith Prince trying to find a spot in line. Nobody cut him a break yet. Joey Hickox in the three truck further back. And I mean, look at this slide. It goes all the way back to, looks like Haas Beverly, who I believe actually just got put, unfortunately, a lap down maybe. Two laps down. So I'm not sure if he went to go fix some more damage or if this is just him losing his second lap. He's going to try to hold on to leaders here. It's closed. The truck was hitting 183 there. The turns are where it's really hurting him right now. So nonetheless, he's going to need some cautions, and he's going to need them soon. Here we go. First round of pit stops. Who all comes in? Who doesn't here? Looks like your leader chose to stay out. Couple lockups, but everybody gets in clean. Not sure on whether or not anybody got a speeding penalty, but besides that, again, good execution this time around from just about the entirety of the field. So it'll be 22 laps to go for these guys as well when they cross the stripe. As we see that first pit stop now, you know, kind of the trade-off here is maybe they take a little bit less fuel than everybody else. Eh, I'm not sure. It's going to be interesting to see how the strategy split right here. We'll keep it on it. The point is, though, a good clean stop led in by Sam Boutwell, and he is going to lead him right back out. His teammate Justin Parham will be second, leading this line out. Riley Gomes, not for position, but comes out third. Bill Hales, followed by Michael Lawrence, Kenneth Redinger, and Brody Benty. And now the front group going to make their stops as well. So where sometimes it gets a little dicey here. Everybody trying to get in clean. Oh, Phillips. Oh, he got in way too hot. There's no chance he made that without getting a speeding ticket. You saw the lockup even after the commitment cone. And, oh, man, that's just a mistake there, I think, from Wesley Phillips. I'll be amazed here if he does not get a penalty. As for everybody else, I think they did get an okay. And now does the 46 overshoot his box? Looks like he did a little bit. And jacking up the left side? Well, we'll see here. I mean, by him taking tires, maybe he didn't get a penalty, but I just don't see any way he... Oh, no, he definitely did. Yeah, 46 is stuck on the pits now, and there's nothing he can do. He'll have to serve it about 40 seconds or so, and this will cost him any chance at the win now without a caution. As up front, just a couple more guys that haven't made their final stop yet. Clay Cantrell, Justin Bentley, as Kevin Winker now gets back up to speed. See, do these two bring it in this time? Sure enough, they do. Clay Cantrell and Justin Bentley, similar-looking paint schemes and a similar-looking pit stop as well. They both get in clean. And we'll see here how they're going to fare as they did go an extra lap with only two trucks versus, say, three or four, which everybody else had. And as for Kevin Winker, he got off the pits the best. The problem is he's by himself. And Batwell's got a group of three here, and they are charging Justin Parham, Bill Hales. And they're probably going to have enough of a run here to shoot right by the 42 without question. Yeah, they certainly will. Now, as for these two, keep an eye on that track map. Here comes the field roaring into the trial bowl. Man, this is going to be really close. That extra lap of staying out may have hurt these guys. And now the field roaring by the pits. And there you go. Yeah, they flew by. So that's a really tough break there for Clay Cantrell. And Justin Bentley is, I don't even think they're going to be able to hold on to this pack in general, much less come out the leaders. So now we'll start to turn our attention to the front. And what is all going to form up to ultimately create what will be the lead pack here for these final 20 laps? Now, important to note, these front three, that's not all. You see the rest of the field just behind it. You know, we did thin the herd a little bit, but really not that much. Certainly not as much as maybe I thought we were going to as Justin Bentley, Clay Cantrell. Pretty close, but not close enough. 1.8 seconds, the distance separating the last car in the lead pack from Clay Cantrell. And so, yeah, that is going to be a lost draft for the 88 and the 16. Good news is they do still have each other, though, so they won't have to worry about losing a lap here. They'll just have to worry about trying to stay rather on the lead lap. Or, excuse me, just have to hope that they get a caution to have a chance at the win here before this thing's all said and done. And as for behind them, Ryan Gomes, Ryan Newman, they could potentially catch that group. I'd say Ryan Gomes and Derek Catt. 
And if they catch that group, then that, of course, could maybe give them a chance to catch up as well. But now up front, what was kind of two, maybe three separated groups has now all merged back into one big group. And everybody good to go on fuel and tire from here. So now it's all about when do you set up your moves, when do you make them. And I think we're going to see action start to really ramp up right here. It's going to ramp up in a hurry. Before things do, how about a little crank it up here at Talladega? Here we go. And that'll do it for tonight's segment of Crank It Up because the action is picking up. Hope everybody did enjoy it, though. Nonetheless, up front, here we go. The 42 of Kevin Winker back where he feels like he belongs at a track like Talladega, and that is in the lead. But, boy, he's got a long way to go. And I'm telling you, you can see just how unstable this thing is. And I don't think this pack will stay together like this the rest of the race without a caution. I mean, the moves we are seeing made now and the aggression level of pushing I mean, you knew it was just a matter of time, and we're going to see four wide here. We are. Riley Gomes is going to get ditched by the Venom Racing teammates, and that's going to put four of them all in a line. Riley trying to hold a steady wheel here. This could get a little dicey here. Going into one, still four wide. Looks like Chase Greer said no thank you. Gives Riley a chance to jump back in line somewhere. Riley Gomes chooses to go to the middle. Zach Stevens will resurge up top. Riley Gomes now jumps back to the outside on the inside, though. Oh, man, big move there as the 29 gets clear of the middle, but he's going to choose to go all the way down to the bottom. Matthew Fritz now leading here at Talladega with 15 laps to go. Kevin Winker in the middle, and Joey Hickox up top with Zach Stevens. Remember, Bill Hales, of course, again, got the win, so wonder what's going through his mind right now. How is he trying to set this up? Is he thinking about pushing the 29 the rest of the way? Or does he think about can he push the 29 clear and get himself in position to potentially go for it. Hales all over the back bumper of Matthew Fritz. I mean, you can tell that this truck's out of shape here as well. He is doing everything he can to keep it together. It's just a matter of time. Joey Hickox up top with Zach Stevens. Now notice, we're gonna watch the zoomed in cam here all the way through turns three and four as we rock it down the back right now. And notice the pushing down the back, a whole bunch of it, every lane pushing their guy, trying to see if they can get him clear. And then when we get into the turn, that's where it gets interesting. Everybody backs off except Bill Hales. Bill Hales stays connected to 29 of Fritz, and look at the run that it gives him. Now the 53 of Hales almost gets clear. But the reason I show you that is because that's what you're going to have to do, especially in the last couple laps of this race if you want a chance to win it for yourself. A lot of people think it's maybe over when you get trapped behind a guy, but it's not. Your goal is to push that guy in front of you as far ahead as you can. Best way to do that is to push him in the corners, but you got to do it smooth. You got to stay stable. 
It only takes one mistake to, again, cause the big one, which we haven't had yet. Only two cautions up to this point, but 13 laps is still certainly plenty to see that time bomb go off. By the way, after penalties and green flag cycled pit stops, here's what it's looking like for some of the guys that had trouble. Haas, Beverly, seven laps down. Aiden Lund still two. Derek Catt, Brody Benty, Leslie Phillips, and Riley Gomes all currently a lap down as well. With Riley Gomes, Wesley Phillips battling for that lucky dog spot, as is Brody Benty. But it's going to be 12 laps to go this time. Now, I know it's a long ways away still, but remember, we got to make it all the way to the white flag for this race to be official. Kevin Winker, of course, one of the guys carrying an onboard camera for us here tonight. I know we looked at it a couple times already, but another view of what the 42 can see and what it looks like in the real-life cockpit as he is pushing on Bill Hales for all he is worth. I think Winker is definitely one of those guys where if you're wanting to go to the front, you definitely need to be in front of him getting a push, but you know he's not going to necessarily just stay committed the whole way. He's saying right now, Bill, listen, I don't mind pushing you right now, but you already won a Daytona, and I really want to win one of these myself, so I don't think I'm going to be pushing you too long here. But nonetheless, Bill Hales, and on the outside, and he is battling the man on the inside, Matthew Fritz. Fritz in the 29, Hales in the 53. 11 laps now to go as that third lane really starts to die out. I think that... Zach Stevens more so and actually anybody in this third lane is at a point where they really need to recycle the temps and that's a hard commitment to do but basically what you need to do is drop to the back get back in line as long as you got guys that you know go with you give it a lap or two let everybody's temps get refreshed set up a run and then go to the front you should have more temps to out push everybody else in theory a lot easier said than done believe me but you're gonna have to find something here track temps still plenty hot enough for this outside to have a chance problem is do they have enough temps to make it work 130 degrees I can promise you the tires are starting to feel it for anybody that's on the inside line Matthew Fritz does surge ahead again and it's gonna be interesting to see does the 29 stay down the rest of the way or is there any point where he thinks about maybe jumping up you got to be careful because if you do go up and you get split it's gonna bring any hopes you had of winning this race probably to an end is you're gonna get sent all the way to the back at I mean, I think at this point, if you're not going for track position, you might as well just sit in the back and wait because you're running out of laps to do it. This isn't one of those tracks where you can just make a pass on a guy instantly in one corner. I mean, it takes time. You saw Michael Lawrence jump out there for a minute, but he quickly jumped back down the line as Chase Greer, Chase Stinson. Now on the inside of their two Venom Racing teammates, Joey Hickox and Zach Stevens. We'll see... If they decide to let either of them in, doesn't look like it. Does Chase jump up potentially here? Doesn't look like it either here. For the moment, the eight seems content to stay down. Zach Stevens looking for another push here. On Joey Hickox, he's going to try it again here. Didn't quite get it to work the last go around, but he knows that they've got to try something. Now, I think some more guys will jump out from this middle line when we get closer to the end. And I mean, I'm looking at anybody such as Mark Beverly, even Ronnie Morrison maybe, but now that this third lane is searched again, that'll cut off the chance for Mark Beverly to do so. We'll see if Kevin Winker maybe tries to give it a shot himself. 42, not jumping up yet. Seems like he is staying content to ride behind the 53. If he can get Bill Hills clear, I think he's got to be expecting that the 53 is going to jump down. And maybe not. Bill did get clear there, but he did not jump down. And now that'll allow Matthew Fritz to resurge on the bottom. I think Sam Batwell has kind of ran himself out of temps and he's trying to regroup as well right now as it's just, it's a gridlock. Similar to what you'd see traffic-wise on the LA freeway or I-4, there's just nowhere to go, especially if you're second, third row on back. You're in line, you are where you are, and you're just trying to push your line to make as much progress as possible. And now another thing you can try, which we haven't seen much of yet, we've seen a little bit of it, is you can do three truck tandems on the back straightaway, especially a little bit on the front as well where if the guy, the lead pusher, is square, in this case, we'll use Kevin Winker as an example. If he's squared up on the back of Bill Hales, that 97 of Mark Beverly can push the 42 as well. You cannot do that in the corner with these trucks, but it is certainly an option on the straights. We'll have to see if anybody decides to give it a try. Still nothing doing as Bill Hales continues to surge out front in the middle of the top with the second most momentum in the bottom. Still struggling to hold even here, at least for the most part as they cross the stripe this time. It'll give them officially seven laps to go. Joey Hickok still on the outside. Zach Stevens as well. 
53 of Hills looking for his second win of the season. The 29 of Fritz looking for his first. Don't forget all the wins that Matthew Fritz, or excuse me, the run Matthew Fritz was able to put together last season with a couple wins. Looking to get that trend started again here tonight. And seven laps to go. Make it six and a half now as they rock it down the Alabama gang back straight away. And boy, what a race again that it's been here just to get to this point here tonight. You know, the final five laps are usually the most chaotic, but we've been seeing this crazy race in for probably about the last 20, ever since we had that last green flag pit stop at least. And that's just showing you that everybody knows how important track position is. At the same time, everybody showing the skill level to be able to have this kind of racing and produce this kind of racing at a track where it's this tough to not wreck it. Oh, man, maybe spoke a little too soon. Big check up in the middle as there was a little bit of an offset push and an almost disaster after that, but they all save it. Another hold your breath moment, and that causes a stack up in the middle, but also slows the momentum on the outside. Here we go, new taker to the third lane. It's gonna be Ronnie Morrison. First time we've seen Morrison jump up, but remember I said as each lap goes by, you're gonna to start to potentially get more and more takers up top, and it looks like Ronnie decided it was time to go. Now he's gonna get a push from Joey Hickox. I just don't know if that, I mean, even the middle is kind of doing the same. These guys, surprised to not see him trying to pinch a little bit harder now. Get a little bit more of a side draft on the lanes below. As now we're going to see the 47 of Boutwell who had been pushing that 29 for so long get clear. He needed some fresh air. He'll jump up now. Mark Beverly looking third. He'll get split four wide. And ooh, that 97's in a really bad position here. Can he hold it together? Zach Stevens looking to his outside as well. Oh, not going to work. The 97 into the wall. Joey Hickox says, well, they don't quite fully wreck, so we stay green. And now it looks like Joey Hickox is going to try to get back together with Mark Beverly here as quick as they possibly can. Try to get this momentum regrouped back together and get caught back up. But, I mean, this is just four wide again. It's just you knew it wasn't going to work eventually. And let's see here. Does Beverly come up a little bit? Yeah, Beverly definitely is coming up a little bit there. But at the same time, well, actually, I take that back. I don't think Mark Beverly is actually coming up. You see his right sides there are already about on the whites. And maybe go a little bit above the white, but Joey gets into the wall, and Joey comes down. And, I mean, at the end of the day, you can't fold either guy. It's just four wide. It's really tight. And they both go to the wall. They both save it. But now, looking at the gap, they have lost the leaders. And so, unfortunately, they're going to need a caution. But don't rule one out here because now we're seeing another big move as Bill Hales and Kevin Winker are going to split Sam Boutwell in the 47. Meanwhile, all this going on, Justin Parham has managed to take the lead on the inside of the racetrack. 29, Matthew Fritz falls into second. And I don't know still, like I said, Winker and Hales, they've been working really good together. But will Winker think about trying to pull out a line to go for it himself? Or does he stay loyal, stay committed here? to the 53 the rest of the way through. They are going to be coming up on a little bit of lap traffic here. It looks like it's about three trucks that are currently all single file, so it shouldn't be a big issue. But if they're three wide as they were, these guys may have to hop on the apron here. We'll have to see how this pans out. For now, that is Aiden Lund, Tyler Clemis, and 51 of Ryan Newman. And I think, yeah, he should be okay here. Let's continue to watch this lead pack coming up on him. Does Parham have a draft off of him? He does. This will actually help the 19 get enough of a pull to potentially get clear of the 53 before they get there. Oh, is Bill Hale going to pitch him down? No, he doesn't. He will give him a little bit of room to jump up as Lunn actually goes below the apron. Do Clemens and Newman do the same here? They do not. They're going to keep it on the racetrack two by two. Three wide further back. Not even an issue. Going to be coming to two laps to go. Four wide. Oh, we may not make it. Now it is four wide. Further back. Riley Gomes into Chase Greer. Oh, Greer somehow holds on to it. And now more three wide action. They are blocking up top. That was Michael Lawrence in the 12 who jumps up. Hasn't led anything tonight, but boy, you only need to lead one, and it only needs to be the last one. The 12 up top, these guys are pushing for all they're worth. The last half a lap for there to be a caution if there's going to be one. Kevin Winker setting him in the 53 up for that final lap. you got to wonder how much temp does Matthew Fritz and Kevin Winker have. They're the two lead pushers on the bottom in the middle. 
As for Sam Batwell, I got to think he's in the best spot of anybody in terms of temps for pushing. And now you just wonder, does he have enough willpower as Fritz thought about going to the middle? I think he was just trying to cool. And more bobbing and weaving, but they're going to do it. How about this? White flag in the air. One lap to go at Talladega. And still anybody's race to win. Three by three down into turn number one. Boutwell pushing for all he's worth. Almost got offset of the 12, but he's trying everything to get him to the front of this pack. Kevin Winker right now stuck behind the 53. Same thing for the 29 of Matthew Fritz. This is going to come down to a battle of who can push the best. Does Bill Hales jump down? Oh, Winker tried to split him. Couldn't quite do it. Now they're going to wreck. Wrecking big time into three. The whole field is in it. Only the front two are going to make it through. This is going to come down all the way between Michael Lawrence and Sam Boutwell. Three wide out back. They're not going to have anything. Lawrence tucks back down in line. Oh, look for a bit of a draft. Got one, but then there was a block. Oh, he looks for another side jump. Oh, he turns Bowell hard into the wall. Michael Lawrence all the way to the checkers. He doesn't get it. Kenneth Reddy just steals it at the checkered. Are you kidding me? Heartbreak for Bowell Lawrence. Bowell and Lawrence, and Rittinger steals it. That might have been one of the craziest finishes I have ever seen. Well, they kept it clean for over 40 laps. You wondered if it would all break loose. And the last one, and it did. All right, well, before we see anything, we have got, I mean, we've got some stuff to sort out here. This was absolutely incredible stuff here. In terms of, well, maybe I shouldn't put it that way. This was crazy stuff. We'll put it that way. Is fortunately they weren't quite able to keep it clean to the line, but that's just what was happening with all the moves. So here we go. Back this up to how it starts. Down the back here again. I didn't think Kevin Winker had a chance. Does he try to split Bill Hales? It looked like he did. I, he may have. It was really, really close to save for sure. He may have just been trying to cool. Nonetheless, sorry, I was trying to check something here. As he does so, gets Bill Hales a little bit, and at the same time, you see the outside with some trouble there as they start stacking up. I think this is from an offset push in itself as well. Yeah, it is. Boutwell just gets a little off of Lawrence, and then Jay Stinson trying to correct for that. He gets in the wall once he gets back down the track. I mean, wrecks on from there, and it's a pretty big one, too. At this point, nobody's lifting, and take another angle of that one here from TV3. And again, it collects pretty much everybody. See, Bill Hales gets spun. Fritz dodges most of it, so he continues to. But at this point, I mean, they're battling out back. We thought for sure that we were about to see a winner between one of these two here. Both drivers looking for their first win. And first view I want to see is from the chopper view. So it looked like there was a little bit of block in here going on, but surprised to see that 47 get turned around. As here we go. So they're side by side. And Lawrence here, 47 gets a run. He gets back in line looking for a little bit of a draft here. Gets it, immediately tucks back out. I think he's looking for a side draft here. At this point, Boutwell moves up. The 12's there, gets into him. And then at this point, this is where things got really ugly here is the 12. He goes to get back down here. He's got to run. I think he's going for a side draft. Does he just misjudge it? He kind of stops there. And then he goes to get a little bit lower, and he just hooks him. Said, I got to wonder if he just misjudged it. Not sure, but once he does, that's a huge hit for Boutwell. And I thought for sure Lawrence was fine here. Then all of a sudden, here comes Redinger with a big head of steam. And look at this. In about the last 100 yards, which we talked about, differentiates Talladega from Daytona. Kenneth Redinger steals one. Matthew Fritz gets second. And Michael Lawrence hangs on to third, but it was just barely... Man, oh man. Going to be some interesting driver interviews for this one. I'm sure Sam Boutwell probably not too happy now. I do want to go to the onboard here for Michael Lawrence. Like I said, I think I don't think this was intentional by any means. I think he just misjudges it. But here we go. There's the draft. Jumps out, looks for a side draft. Boutwell goes for a block. Lawrence saves it. Comes down looking for a bit of a side draft. And I think he just misjudges it and then... Yeah, he gets back on the gas immediately, but that mistake just 
cost them way too much of a run. Now, you don't talk about a crazy view of all of it. Let's watch Kenneth Redinger's view at the end of this. I mean, he's going to be excited about this one, and you can't blame him. But watch the view he gets of this one through the last lap. Not only making it through this wreck, but then also somehow coming out of this thing as a winner. So here's the trouble up top. Stinson gets down to Winker. They all start wrecking. He goes low. Oh my goodness. Just misses Bill Hales. Now he's in the middle of three wide. Somehow they're going to get this sorted out to where Matthew Fritz jumps in behind the 24. Now he's going to give him a huge push. And all this bumping and banging up there. They're pulling a draft. He's getting pushed. And then this mistake right here. Lawrence loses all his run. Redinger goes low. Then he goes high. Lawrence looks for a block. Not enough. And that is how Kenneth Redinger captures the win here tonight. Man, what a finish. Final results. Kenneth Redinger again declared as your race winner here tonight. Matthew Fritz brings home second. Michael Lawrence in third with Dylan Pauls in fourth. Chase Greer fifth. Clinton Woodby in sixth. Zach Stevens in seventh. Jay Stinson eighth. Justin Parham ninth. And Mark Beverly rounding out your top ten. Joey Hickox finishes 11th. Bill Hales in 12th. Keith Prince 13th with Justin Bentley in 14th. Clay Cantrell, 15th. Ronnie Morrison in 15th. Ro or excuse me, Ronnie Morrison in 16th. Kevin Winker, 17th. Sam Boutwell finishes in 18th. Brady Bentley in 19th. And Ryan Newman rounding out your... Or Ryan, Riley Gomes, excuse me, rounding out your top 20. Ryan Newman, 21st. Wesley Phillips, 22nd. Ryan Gomes, 23rd. Derek Catt, 24th. Tyler Clemens in 25th. Aiden Lund, 26th. Derek Catt, or excuse me, Man, I am struggling here tonight. I apologize. Rounding out the field was Haas Beverly in 27th. All right, we are going to go get your top three in here for interview. Stick with us. We will be right back at Talladega. All right, back live at Talladega Super Speedway. Going to start first with your third place finisher, Michael Lawrence. Michael, this is Austin in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. Well, man, you came so close, but a little bit of a tangle there. Coming through the travel with Sam Boutwell. Cost you the race. Break us down that last lap and that finish for you there. I saw them wrecking behind me. Um, we got going up there through the corner, and then he dove below me. Got up there. He kind of rose up to kind of you know try and block a little bit and i got a little sideways came back down and the trial kind of threw me off i kind of looking at it it looks like maybe i clipped him um but i mean it was hard racing to the end i don't get a chance to win many of these and if i did clip him i'm sorry it was just hard racing for a win i don't get to win many of these it was so close and i feel bad for him going farther down to 47 but i mean that's racing sometimes certainly is and i mean what a crazy race it was here tonight we saw really clean racing overall through most of the race before the chaos unfolded there at the end and you know from start to finish kind of break us down the mindset that you had in terms of how to keep yourself in contention all the way to the end um actually i tried a little different strategy than i'm used to here i went aggressive because usually I'm the type of guy that plays it safe. So I went more aggressive than I'm used to and just trying to keep myself in that front pack because for a while there, it definitely felt like it was going to go long like it did. And there, we were three wide for a long time. It was some fun racing. It was certainly fun to watch as well. Before we let you head out here tonight, is there anyone you'd like to thank or shout out? Uh, my wife for putting up with me uh, racing um, on my few days off I get. Um, pretty much my mom and dad. <laughs> That's about it. I don't got too many sponsors. Well, thank you for talking to us again. Congrats on the third place finish, and we'll see you next week. All right, you too.
All right, and now that'll bring us up to your second place finisher here on the night for Venom Racing. It's Matthew Fritz. Matthew, this is Austin in the booth. You got a copy? Uh, yes, sir. Well, you came really, really close. Not quite enough, but all things considered, probably not the way you were expecting things to end. Break us down how you're able to maneuver through that last wreck and how you managed to push Redinger to a win there. It was about luck. I, I got lucky. I missed a 53 coming down across. I thought I was going to be in it. And then the, I thought the best way for me to have a chance to get a win or get a top three was to push Kenneth. And it was, and it worked out. Yeah, it certainly did. And, you know, any time that you start to rack up these podium finishes, you start to gain momentum. And now that you got one here tonight with a second-place finish, how are you feeling going into Darlington next week? Uh, I love Darlington, so I feel 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 pretty good about it. And, uh, yeah, Darlington's a good track for me and my teammates, so I'm, I'm happy. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Thank you for talking to us here tonight. Before we let you head out, though, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? Uh, I got to shout out my um... – my mom and my dad and my grandmother for watching my mom's uh, pet sitting business on the top of the hood. Manny Rays, Raymond does a does a lot for this uh, league. Uh, Jerry and Joey, also my teammates, do a great job. And Zach and Chase, we all had a good. We finally all had a good good run tonight. And uh, you do. And uh, f uh, thank you, Austin, for doing a, a fabulous job at calling all the races. Again, thank you for talking to us. Congrats on the second place finish. We will see you next week at Darlington. Thank you, Austin. All right, and now that'll bring us up to your winner here tonight, Kenneth Redinger. Kenneth, this is Austin in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, I mean, the first question is what everybody's wondering. Did you really think you were going to win that as soon as you made it through the wreck? No, no. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, we were pretty uh, – looked like we were going to finish uh, third and fourth there, me and Fritz. Uh, and uh, I couldn't believe that the uh, two leaders – they had a pretty good large gap and. I don't know who that was in second that ended up hooking. It looks like they hooked the, the leader there, and before you know it, it's like the wind just falls on your lap. So, <laughs> Well, you know, it was so close to seeing your teammate potentially get his first win of the season, but nonetheless, you score not your first one of the season, but nonetheless, another win on the season. And, you know, just tonight in general, there was a lot of chaos at the end, but overall a lot of clean racing. Did that kind of alter your mindset for how you had to go about this race, especially when we had a green flag cycle at the end? Um, really, I don't know, real good racing, but you try, I try, try I wanted to be on the bottom there because it seemed you, like you can, uh, avoid the wreck there. If you're on that second, second and third lane, you're, you're pretty much going to be in it. So, um, as long as you got that bottom, you have, you have options to turn down to the apron. So, but, um, well, I mean, it was pretty good racing compared to, to how, how it was going in the, uh, the other, uh, super speedway series. So that's a good race. Yeah, it certainly was. Well, we appreciate you talking to us. So before we let you head out, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? No, just shout out to Fritz there for that push there. Um, he kind of committed to me there. And I think if uh, he had to have turned left, he I think he would have went on won that race. So um, shout out to him. Shout out to my teammates. I think we worked pretty good uh, during the race. Um, looks like they both got taken out in the last uh, two uh, wrecks there and, and uh, the 47 being the leader. So shout out to them and shout out to the league for putting this on for us. Absolutely. And again, thank you for talking to us. Congrats on the win. Go celebrate. You are a winner at Talladega, and we will see you next week. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Kenneth Redinger steals one at the fastest track in all of NASCAR. That's going to wrap up our coverage here tonight from Talladega. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week with the Manny Ray's Noma Truck Series at Darlington. Don't miss out on that one. But until then, that's it for me, Austin Green, here on Ghost Racing Network. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a good night.